competition. David Weed! Keep it going for our wonderful host, Sean Murphy! Good old Sean. Well, not old. He's more aged like a fine wine. That's right. We all have to do one wine joke. That's part of the... What a great place. What a beautiful audience. It's part, yeah, part of the contract. We have to compliment the venue, how beautiful all you all have been. And we've had a lot of great comedians so far. So yeah, my name is David Weed. That's my real last name, Weed. It was a... I grew up in Portland. It was wild growing up in Portland uh, with the last name Weed. It would get me in trouble growing up. Every year I tried to run for a student council in high school and they kept <laughs> kicking me out. That's right, I spent all night making all these posters. I wanted to run for a student body president. I thought I had the greatest campaign slogan. It was vote for Weed, I'll be your bud. Principal disqualified me so fast on that one. That's okay. I came back the next year. This was the, gonna be the one that did it for me, right? Vote for weed. Let's smoke the competition. <laughs> disqualified again. Can you believe it? But the third time was the charm. I came back. It was vote for weed. Hey, I'll be blunt. That's right, the principal did not know what a blunt was, and now you're looking at the student body vice president of Lincoln High School in 2000. Now we're not going to say it. That's right. Uh, I was also uh, on an episode of the Montel Williams show about 20 years ago when I was much younger. I don't know, maybe you saw my episode. It was called My Parents Are Gay. This is not a bit, this is real exclamation point. My parents are gay. Maybe you saw that episode. Uh, I thought I was going to go be a powerful queer ally, queer advocate, go tell America, it's cool to have two gay moms. That's what it was for me. Kristen was not one of my two gay moms, no. <laughs> Our previous comedian that we've seen tonight. <laughs> not yet. But maybe we can hook up some kind of parent trap later on. <laughs> Something happened though, Montel got to the interview part, those lights were so bright. I'd smoked weed out of a Big Apple. They flew me to the Big Apple. I don't make some noise if you've ever smoked weed out of an apple. Yeah. Oh, damn, this is a cool ass crowd, all right, I know. Yeah, I forgot what I was gonna say after my big moment of fame. I thought I was gonna tell America it's cool to have two gay moms. Montel asked me, what's it like, David, to have two gay moms? And for some reason, all I could think of at that moment to say was, uh, I have to do all of the laundry, Montel. And it's just so much denim. It's just, <laughs> just washing and drying. I wish I could take that back, but I love my two moms. No, that was great. Uh, six years ago was my first, uh, my first set, six years ago today. Uh, I, I took a comedy class, it was how I got into comedy. I was the only guy in the whole class full of women. And uh, it started out a little awkward. I was on my best behavior, but week three something came up and, and I kind of made a fool of myself in the middle of this class full of women. The subject was, uh, we're supposed to do a joke about what if Spider-Man had lived in Portland, right? Uh, like, okay, my kombucha sense is tingling. All right, no, that's not the joke there. but. You know, uh, what if Spider-Man had lived in Portland? I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. I collect Spider-Man comics. Did you know that in the 90s, that Spider-Man in the comics around Amazing Spider-Man number 400, he did move to Portland. Yeah, that's right, Mary Jane got pregnant and, and they moved to Portland. And so here I am in this class explaining to all these women that Spider-Man had lived in Portland. And that's when I realized that's something that no man should ever do. It's a huge problem these days. You know, men are doing it all the time. I realized what I was doing, I was Spider-Man explaining. <laughs> Don't ever do that. <laughs> Does anyone have any pets out here? Who loves their pets? Make some noise. All right, there we go. What's it for you? Do you got a, a cat or a dog? 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 Well, I'm gonna need you to say cat for this joke to work, actually. No, no, I have a dog, too. I love my cute little dog. I was accused recently of just bringing around my cute little dog to impress women. And that's not the case. That's the opposite of what I do. No, I try to bring around women to impress my cute little dog. That's right, when she sees that I hang out with human women, you should see this little dog's face. She's like, no, there's no way. 
That's why it's just me and her in bed every night for the past five years. Me and her. Okay, this joke's getting a little dark. We gotta pivot quickly. Hey, you know what? Why is it okay that we can call cats pussies? You know, but everyone looks at me like I'm crazy when I call my dog a little cunt. It's like, who's my good little, my sweet little, oh, she's a dirty little cunt. Okay, we can't say that three times at the winery. We're not going to class this, keep this place classy around here. That's right. Hey, if you spay and neuter your cats and dogs, then you're a responsible pet owner. But hey, if you spay and neuter your kids, then you're a responsible climate change activist. That's right. You gotta spay and neuter these kids. That's a climate change activism joke, all right. We're gonna, shouldn't have let AI write all of these uh, dog and cat jokes. Uh, that's what I get going on. Cat GTP, all right. Let's pivot to a little uh, news, some topical humor. This is a smart intellectual crowd. I saw Hurricane Ernesto just hit the Virgin Islands. That's too bad, you know, the Virgin Islands because they're about to get fucked. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. All right, that's what I heard. And oh my God, you got one oh my God per set. I'd also like to welcome to the world last week, uh, Jack Blues Bieber. That's right, Justin Bieber just had his baby, as he calls it, of course, his baby, baby, baby. Oh, it's not karaoke night. We're doing jokes here, no. Jack Blues Bieber, uh, his wonderful, uh, the love of his life, Haley Baldwin Bieber. That's right, Alec Baldwin's niece gave birth to his baby. It sounds like Alec Baldwin kind of has something in common with Justin Bieber. You know, neither of them are going around shooting blanks. <laughs> they both thought they were shooting blanks. I was hoping for an oh my God, I heard a Jesus though. We're getting closer. Let's get into the intellectual stuff. All right, I spent all night. Here's one of those posters we were talking about earlier. There's that vote for weed. I'll be your bud. Let's see what else we got. We were talking about cats having a good time. Here's my OMC graph. It stands for owning multiple cats. This is your enjoyment level you're going to see when you own more than one cat. Now, you have one cat, you're going to see the enjoyment levels pretty high. It's going to keep going up three cats, it's going to max out. You can't have more than three cats. Once you have four cats, your enjoyment level, it starts to go down. This is the cat that's going to be peeing in the house everywhere. And the fifth cat, it's not even their fault. You're still mad about that damn fourth cat pissing all over the place. But something strange happens around number six. This is when the, uh, the toxic plasmosis is going to start kicking in, and you're going to really start enjoying all of your cats, but then there's diminishing returns after that, and your enjoyment level will start to go down. That's my OMC owning multiple cats graph, but just know OMC also stands for uh, open mic comedy. Wait a second. So the enjoyment level, you have one open mic comic. You're going to really enjoy those first three, and then the enjoyment level is going to start going down. Oh, God, I just realized I'm the toxic plasmosis. Osmosis cat. Oh no, this has gone terribly. No, we're gonna enjoy all the. Yeah, should just stayed with the OMC the first half of the graph. I guess a lot of us haven't been to an open mic. Here's a my graph about what comedy in Portland is like. Now, half the comics you're gonna see are very loud. We've seen a couple of us tonight, and a lot of comics in Portland. You might just say that they're queer, but now there's this sweet spot right here where loud and queer intersect. This is going to be what's called funny in Portland. You're going to want to be right here if you want to get booked in Portland. Loud and queer. Compare that to the opposite, of course, which would be a restful and unconcerned with sexual identity. No one's going to want to go to that show in Portland. I saw on the news that there's a, a zoo, a Kansas City Zoo just welcomed a baby kangaroo, and they actually want your help to name this baby kangaroo. And there's been some great suggestions for cute little names like Joey and Jumper and uh, Roo-Pa, R-O-O-P-A-W, but they did not like my suggestion for a, for a baby kangaroo. They said this is the worst possible name for a kangaroo. Spent a lot of time drawing this. I hope y'all like it. This is, this is gonna be, they said this is not a good name for a kangaroo. It's, uh, it says uh, Osama bin Hoppin. 
That's right, and for those of you worried that it might be an offensive caricature, although Saul of Ben Hoffman, it's not, it's so cute, look at his cute little eyes. He's got those cute little weapons of mass destruction in the pouch there. Osama oh, Ben Hoffman, there we go. I saw I got my light. Hey, you've been a great audience. Thank you so much. I'm David Lee. Hey, for me, I'll be your bud. Appreciate you. Keep it going for Sean Murphy. Yeah, keep it going for me, everybody. Give it up for David Lee. Good job, David. All right. Could be your best bud. Thank you.